All right, if you're watching this, it means you just got baptized. We believe baptism is not the end, it's the beginning. It's the first step in your journey of following Jesus. And so I wanna help this journey get off on the right foot or keep it going in the right direction. We believe that there are five things that God uses to grow your faith. Four of those things are kind of in our control and one of those things is not in our control. We've talked about these before. These are called the five faith catalysts. And I wanna give you some practical ways to incorporate these five, four things into your life. So the first thing is practical teaching. Um, my challenge for you in this area is to look for opportunities to incorporate more practical teaching, meaning teaching you can practice into your life. And so for a lot of us, that means making Sunday church attendance more of a regular routine. And so if you're typically once a month, maybe go twice a month. If you're two times a month, maybe go three times a month. Um, but try to make it a habit, something that you build into your life and that's constantly feeding your own personal faith. Number two is providential relationships. Providential relationships. Now, providential means that they come from God, but we can put ourselves in situations where we can develop those relationships. We have groups, we have courses, we've got all sorts of things that will help you connect with other people. Look for people who are a little ahead of you or right where you are on your journey of faith so that you can ask each other questions, share doubts with one another. Maybe you listen to the same teaching together, but the idea is to bring people into your life so that you're not walking alone. Third is private disciplines. For me, this was a huge thing that really jump-started my faith. These are things that you do with God in private. Set aside some time every morning and every night to pray. Maybe it's as little as one minute in the morning and one minute, one minute at night. Uh, my group, my community group, Providential Relationships, we just try to uh, say the Lord's Prayer, but like we actually listen to a, a musical version of it. We just try to do it together three times a day just because it was a great way to reorient ourselves, put our minds in the right spot all throughout the day. And it was extremely rewarding. So if you've never done that before, try to take one minute in the beginning and at the end of each day to direct your attention to God. And what you'll see is that that one minute, if you're consistent with it, starts to grow into other things. Maybe you journal what you've prayed for. Maybe you write it down on a pad or in, a, on an, in an app on your phone. You'd be amazed to see how helpful that kind of stuff could be. Reading. Try to read the Bible or some book that's written about the teachings in the Bible. We just released, I just released a number of reading plans through the books of the Bible and they're not the best, they're not exhaustive, but I tried to provide some context for every chapter in a bunch of books in the New Testament. So you might want to start there. Uh, I just tried to set the scene, give you something to think about for each chapter. And so if you've never read the Bible before, it could be intimidating. Try one of these reading plans that are available on our app uh, or on our YouTube channel. Um, and third is giving. Third, The third private discipline is giving. Um, for me, giving financially, like putting my finances somewhere else that did not personally benefit me, ended up personally benefiting me. It was the most concrete way I could exercise faith. So even if I wasn't there, like emotionally, I could take some of my finances and set them aside to something that is going to outlive me and God always provided for me. And so we here believe in percentage progressive planned giving. We think that's the best way to structure your life so that you're growing in generosity and also that so that you're intentionally giving. Now, we're really careful about how we talk about finances at the church because we never want you to feel like we're trying to get something from you. And so if there isn't yet a relationship of trust between you and the church, don't feel like you need to give to the church. Give to another organization that you trust and care about, but try to make it planned. Try to incorporate it into your budget. Uh, try to make it a percentage of your income, right? So there are people in our church that give over 10% of their income. That's just a practice that they have. But if you've never done that, that can be intense. So maybe start with 1% or 
half a percent. But then ideally, the third P is progressive. Ideally, you continue to increase that percentage as life goes on. That's something Ali and I are trying to do. We're trying to increase that percentage, not the number, but the percentage every year uh, to make sure we are investing in something that is bigger than ourselves. Um, so that's private disciplines. The fourth faith catalyst is personal ministry. There's something about faith that grows when you're doing something that's part of what God is doing here in the lives of others. It could be in a church, it could be somewhere else. But when you see someone grow in their faith or something clicks with them in their relationship with God or their life in the church, and you know you were part of that, there's something that stirs up faith within you. Or if you find yourself in a position where you feel inadequate and all you have is the ability to trust God to provide what you need in the situation, like the disciples were in when they had just a few loaves of bread and Jesus was like, all right, bring them to me. That's the idea with uh, personal ministry. You take what little you have and you're like, here, here's my best. And you watch God multiply it and feed other people through it. And it catalyzes your faith. The fifth and final thing is pivotal circumstances. Now, these are circumstances in life where things change. You get married or you lose a loved one or you have a child, significant things on the timeline of your life. Those also catalyze our faith, but they're not things that we can control for the most part. So the best thing you can do when you're in a pivotal circumstance is make sure that you've already intentionally filled your life with practical teaching, providential relationships, private disciplines, and personal ministry, and watch how it prepares you for pivotal circumstances. So we are excited. I'm excited about the decision you've made to get baptized. I hope that this is the beginning of a season of life change and growth for you. I hope a month from now you feel, and a year from now, you feel so much closer to God and so much stronger in your faith. And we'll be here to support you through every step of the journey. Thanks for getting baptized. Thanks for being part of this church and hope to see you on Sunday.